Well, the God that, that I know is the one who's with me every day, every minute. In him we live and move and have our being, and that's the idea. I mean, he's, he's not far from any of us because in him we live, and uh, with him, he's a living presence in my life. Like, like Adam, you know, he walked with God in the cool of the evening. And it, it would seem that God was orchestrating your life uh, into a narrative before you knew anything about it. There wasn't any question. You know, when I, I had a great aunt who was named Julia Holman, and she was the daughter of a man named Russell Holman, who was a key figure in the Southern Baptist Church. And my aunt dedicated me to the Lord when I was a little baby, and she prayed over me. And so, you know, I, I, I look back in history, I have a number of people in my background who love God, and God carried that through. Before your encounter with Jesus, with God, with yes. all of this that was going on, uh, you, you were a, a mover and a shaker. You were, you had degrees. You had a law degree. What else? Would, uh, well, I I had a, a degree from uh, I had a, a doctorate in law, juris doctor from Yale Law School. I had a master's degree uh, from the New York Theological Seminary, and I also had a bachelor. From Marshall and Lee, so I had 10 years of college. I had a lot of uh, training, and I was trained in business, and I was trained in law, and I was trained in theology. I had the whole package. And yet, for a man who grew to have great wisdom, I have to point out a real flaw. <laughs> you were having dinner with Jack Kennedy, yeah. who became the president of the United States, That's right. and his young date, Jacqueline Bouvier. That's right. And I thought, you know, Kennedy is just too smart, and this little girl is kind of a, uh, you know, <laughs> she was a wide-eyed, cutesy, taking pictures for uh, the paper in Washington. And I said, you know, it won't work. And Kennedy was such a nice guy. He was easy to get along with. We were having dinner at the at the Shoreham Hotel, and I just happened to be in the party, and he was gracious enough to talk to me. And this little girl was there, and I thought, it'll never work. Well, I was not exactly <laughs> prophetic on that one. I'm glad that you didn't keep that yeah. up. Uh, the whole thing that happened and occurred with you later on, when you did have an encounter with God, mm -hmm. that was a very personal thing that happened. It mm -hmm. changed your life forever. It totally did. I, you know, I, I was... I was born again. I, I came to the point where I, I, I had to come to God. I, I, and I wrote my mother. I said, I think I'm, I'm uh, uh, going to be uh, maybe going to ministry. And she said, you didn't talk right. And I had dinner with a guy named Cornelius Vanderbrigg in, in this fancy hotel in Philadelphia. And he pulled this big Bible out and started talking to me. And I was so embarrassed. I thought for sure they're going to throw us out for being religious fanatics. And uh, he said, any Mohammedan could have told me what you did. Isn't there something more? And I said, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world and for my sins too. And when I said that, I heard like a voice in my ears that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And that, that was the moment that, that wow. I said yes. Wow. But there was, then there was a subsequent thing, thing that happened. Remember, you said something to the effect about uh, you were seeing all these things happening, uh, but then came an encounter with the person of the Holy, Holy Spirit, yeah. and it changed everything. It took you into the way I wrote it down. It took you into another spiritual realm. Totally. Okay. You described you were no longer a spectator. Right. You were now an active participant yeah. in the work of a miracle God. And I made a list. Prophetic words, right. miracles, right. visions, dealing with the demonic, right. and spiritual authority it took it to a, no, a transcendent level. It, it was a total change in my life. All those things happened. I mean, and in this book, I mean, I've, I've dealt with demonic power. I have seen miracles. I have seen extraordinary healings. I've seen the word of knowledge. And more than anything, I've, I've had the, the Lord leading me every step of the way. And uh, it happened, Scott, I, I, it's, in the, it's in the book, but yep. my oldest son, Tim, mm -hmm. he was about th what, two or three years old, something like that, but he, he was burning up with a fever. I was there and uh, his eyes were rolling back in his head and I, I knew that if we didn't get something to him, he'd, he'd, 
he'd have brain damage and he was going to be permanently dead. And I got on my knees before and laid my hands on him. I said, God, I pray, Lord God, I just ask you to heal him. And God stopped me and he said, look, if you think you love him, I love him a thousand times more than you do. So will you just turn him over to me? And I said, okay, Lord. And I lifted him up literally in prayer to the power of God. And the power of God came all over him. The fever broke. He got up, went to the bathroom, came back, and by the next morning, he was completely healed. And it was just remarkable. And, and I began to praise God. I began to thank the Lord. And out of my inmost being, Scott, came forth a, a language that I didn't know. Mm. And uh, my wife was sitting there. He said, how long has this been going on? He didn't tell me. You know, it was one of those things. This was Didi to ask you this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and Tim, number one son, um, I worked for him for a while. Yeah. And I'm wearing a belt today that, yeah. that he gave me. He gave everyone else a raise in the family channel, and I got a belt. Well, something's wrong. You know, show me the money. <laughs> I mean, belts are nice. <laughs> Here's a prayer that has been a part of your life forever. Yeah. And you ask God for Lord, I want wisdom, yeah. favor, and anointing. And anointing. Right. In He's my, answered that prayer. My three lifetime, my, I, I've asked for wisdom, and God has, has showered it upon me oh, time and time and time again. I've, wise, I've asked for favor, and I have received favor beyond measure. And, and of course, uh, I've seen uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in many, many ways. What is, what is that? I don't want to digress too much, but anointing. People hear that word. I don't know if they understand what it means. Well, well it's, the, it's the, you know, the, the, they used to pour oil on the head of the high priest. And, and the name Jesus, uh, you know, uh, the Messiah means the anointed one. Mashiach is, is the anointed. And the anointing is, is what the power of God comes upon you. And with God's power, all things are possible. Everything's possible. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting into some of the, the, the characteristics of who you are as a man, mm -hmm. not just the things that you've accomplished. But uh, there's a part of your life, too, it's essential. All the stuff's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, you a, a myriad of projects and all the everything. But in the middle of all of that, you have to have a quiet time. Every day. And, and you have to have personal retreats. You do that once a year. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that important? Both it's, of those? It's vital. It's vital. You know, at, at, the, at the end of the year, I go apart, I ask God, give me some direction for the year, and He speaks to me. But every day, Scott, I have to seek God every day and say, Lord, show me. Show me what you want me to do. Give me a word. I mean, I was praying today, and the Lord gave me a word today. Did you, did you share it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> right. but, that, but that is essential. Oh, it's I, absolutely essential. Well, you know, I, I couldn't live, frankly. I mean, I, 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 I'd be... Legendary Christian broadcaster and former presidential candidate Pat Robinson, who founded the Christian Broadcasting Network and galvanized religious Republicans into a powerful political force, died at his home in Virginia Beach early Thursday. He was 93. Robinson's death was announced by his broadcasting network, which he founded in 1960. No cause of death was given. My dad was at home surrounded by his family when he entered glory and made his savior face to face whom he loved and served with his whole heart mind and being robertson's son and christian broadcasting network ceo gordon robertson wrote in a tribute my father was an extraordinary man by any standard he was an evangelist a humanitarian an entrepreneur an educator an author a statesman, a television personality, a man of global influence, and a tremendous vision. Born in 1930, Robertson, a Baptist minister with a penchant for politics, was known as one of the most prominent evangelical broadcasters and entrepreneurs. The devoted preacher turned a tiny Virginia 
Tor Vision Station into the Global Christian Broadcasting Network using US dollar three initial deposit. At the time, he had no more than US dollar seventy to his name. CBN said Robertson's popular 700 Club Tor Vision show was broadcast into American living rooms for more than a half a century. The rousing religious talk show, which still appears on CBN, is one of the longest running television programs to date. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.